When we first get on social media for the first time or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released we think is quite substantial. It's novel. Remember, dopamine is about novelty, surprise, and the sense that we are on some exciting track. That's what dopamine is really about. It puts us into states of readiness, anticipation, looking, seeking, etc. almost always for things outside the confines of our skin. Uh, just to contrast it maybe for a bit more of a future discussion, serotonin does the opposite. When there's a lot of serotonin in our brain and body, typically it makes us feel satisfied, sated, and more quiescent, comfortable with what we have in our own immediate sphere and within us, right? The comfort of a good meal, the food you have, dopamine is about go, go, go. If you look at somebody who's high on cocaine or methamphetamine, it's all about pursuit because that's a very dopaminergic drug. You look at somebody who's taken a drug, and I'm not suggesting people do this, but it really ramps up serotonin. Let's say a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, Prozac, Zoloft, et cetera. The side effects of those drugs, if the dosages are too high, lack of appetite, lack of libido, kind of meh about life, you know, then so they'll adjust the dose down. That's because those are serotonergic drugs. So in, in general, when we are in pursuit of things, dopamine is, is quite high. So now you have to remind me your question because I've set up the dopamine serotonin, uh, parallel. cell phones. Ah, cell phones. Yes. Um, forgive me. So. The thing about cell phones is when you first get on there and you haven't, let's say you're it, no Wi-Fi on the flight or something and you land, it can actually be quite stimulating. You get a lot of dopamine. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. But very quickly when you're scrolling on social media, you're no longer getting the novelty, but you're continuing to do it. You almost don't know why you're doing it. At that point, it shifts over to something that's a bit more like an obsessive compulsive behavior where the, we can define an obsessive compulsive behavior where the obsession leads to a compulsion. So the obsession is a thought, the compulsion is a behavior, but the acting out of the compulsion merely serves to increase the obsession, right? This is very different than being obsessed with food or obsessed with cleanliness. There's no payoff. Right, exactly. There's no anxiety relief by carrying out the compulsion. With OCD behaviors, like scrolling social media, the dopamine quickly wanes and then you find that you're just sort of, and we've all been there, you're scrolling, you're like, why am I doing this? This isn't that interesting. That is, this isn't that interesting. Now, the algorithms for social media are very clever and I don't want to demonize it. I, you know, provide a lot of, a lot of my life is spent on, you know, on social media now, but in the algorithms that they've incorporated function on the, the most powerful way to keep people doing a behavior or an animal for that matter is intermittent random reward, a random intermittent reward that you don't know when you're going to hit the jackpot. So you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and then you see something. Typically, it's very high what, you know, in nerd speak, we'd say signal to noise. So if you're reading some interesting things, this came out in the news, this came out, and then it's all of a sudden a riot or a person that is jump, is base jumping off a building or, um, you know, for people that are, are scrolling, looking at bodies or something like that, uh, live bodies. So hopefully people aren't looking at dead bodies. But look, if something's very tragic, then that has this gravitational pull. And then you, what happens is you start getting the system working for that next dopamine hit that you don't know when it's going to come. It's just like gambling. So I look at social media as initially being very dopaminergic, driving rewards, surprise, and excitement, but very quickly transitioning to something more like OCD. And the kinds of behaviors where it looks, if you, if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment, like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. If you saw an animal digging in the corner, looking, 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 looking for a bone, the dog is looking, 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 you'd think that's really sad. How social media is destroying your brain. In today's hyperconnected world, social media is everywhere. It's on our phones, in our hands, and constantly vying for our attention. Platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter, or X, have become an integral part of our lives, shaping how we interact, think, and even feel. But what if these platforms are doing more harm than good? What if social media is not just a distraction, but is actively destroying your brain? In this article, we'll explore the science behind the psychological and neurological impacts of social media and why it's critical to reevaluate how we engage with these platforms. The Dopamine Trap Addiction and disguised social media platforms are engineered to keep you hooked. Every like, comment, and share releases dopamine the brain's reward chemical. 
This is the same neurotransmitter that's activated when people gamble, consume alcohol, or use drugs. Over time, your brain starts craving more of these short bursts of pleasure, leading to compulsive scrolling and an inability to disconnect. This cycle can spiral into a full-blown addiction. Research has shown that excessive social media use triggers changes in the brain's reward system, similar to those seen in substance abuse disorders. This rewiring makes it harder to focus on other tasks, weakens impulse control, and fosters dependency on digital validation. Shortened attention span, the TikTok effect. Have you ever found it hard to focus on a book, a long video, or even a conversation? Social media may be to blame. The constant stream of short, engaging content trains your brain to expect instant gratification. Platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels offer bite-sized entertainment that keeps you engaged for hours but at a cost. Your attention span. A study by Microsoft found that the average human attention span has dropped to just 8 seconds shorter than that of a goldfish. This decline is closely linked to our consumption of digital content. When your brain is conditioned to process information in short bursts, it struggles to engage with anything requiring prolonged focus or deep thinking. The anxiety-depression spiral social media fosters a culture of comparison. When you're constantly bombarded with highlight reels of other people's lives, it's easy to feel like you're falling short. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, and even depression. A study published in the journal Depression and Anxiety found that people who spend more time on social media are more likely to report symptoms of depression and anxiety. The phenomenon of fear of missing out, FOMO further exacerbates this, as users feel pressured to keep up with what others are doing, even at the expense of their mental health.